Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be working on how to add scoring into our Pong game. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is, of course, create our variable for our score. So the way we do this is saying var score will be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and then this is going to be an array of integers. Now this will all make sense as soon as I get this all set up, so let's go ahead and set it up. So the first thing I want to do is right down here, I'm going to go ahead and create another function down here that says start game. So this is, of course, we're going to be implementing this later on. But when we start the game, we want to go ahead and reset the score. So we're going to go ahead and say my score will be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and then this will be 0, comma, 0. So we have our my score, which will be this one right here, and then the enemy score, which is going to be this one right there. Now, I think this is just a cleaner way than having two variables for each of the players. This just handles things a little bit cleaner coding wise, in my opinion. So now that we've got our score all set up, let's go ahead and add to the score. So obviously in our Pong game right here, once the ball goes behind one of the players, that's when you're gonna add score and that's when someone's gonna lose. Now, the question is how do we determine when the ball goes behind the player and it hits like the border of the scene. So the way I'm going to do this is let's go ahead, go down here to our update function. And this is where we're going to be testing some variables as we're playing the game. So this is again being called before every frame. So you want to keep whatever you're testing in here to a minimum. Otherwise your processes will be totally messed up and your game quality goes down. So again, keep that to a minimum. We're just testing positions. So we should be perfectly fine. So the positions that we're going to be testing, we're just going to go ahead and say, if my ball dot position dot y is less than or equal to so again this is just saying if it's below some paddle so if we go back here we can see that less than or equal to uh, anywhere below this paddle now i want it to be nearing the border as close as possible so what i'm going to do is say my ball dot position dot y is less than or equal to let's say my main dot position dot y and then we'll say minus 70? We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. You don't want to make it too low or else the ball will never reach that position and you don't want to make it too high otherwise it looks like it chops off and that's not good. So you're just trying to find that perfect middle ground. Then just go ahead and say open curly bracket, close curly bracket and then this is where we're going to be adding some score and we'll set that function up in just a minute. But let's go ahead and continue this on and say else if my ball dot position dot y is greater than or equal to and then we can just go ahead and say my enemy dot position dot y and again we're going with 70 so i'm going to say plus 70 and then open curly bracket close curly bracket and then now that we have all that done let's go ahead and add some score so the way we're going to do this is go up here and we're going to create another function called add score now inside of these parentheses right here i'm going to be sending some variable into that and in this case this is going to be which sprite node won or lost and that's going to be either our main or our ball so i'm going to go ahead and say player who won colon and then I'm going to set this equal to an SK sprite node like so and then once we go down here we can go ahead and say add score and then we can go ahead and put in our player who won or the SK sprite node and then this case if it's going below our main person then of course our enemy just won that round so I'm going to go ahead and put in enemy and then we can go ahead and do the exact same thing down here so I'm going to say add score our player who won and then this is going to be my main or that's gonna be you who won that time. So we created this function right up here that says add score and we put in our SK sprite node. So this is so we can test things properly and make sure that we're adding the right score. And also I'm putting it in a separate function because again, I don't wanna have that many processes going on with my update function. So up here inside of my add score, I'm also going to be resetting the ball position and also picking a different uh, impulse to apply to that ball. So here we are, let's just go ahead and add the score. So we're gonna say if my player who won is equal equal to and we're going to set this equal to our main then open curly bracket close curly bracket else if our player who won is equal equal to our enemy then we're going to go ahead and do this stuff down here now what i'm wanting to do is go ahead and add some score so i'm going to say score and the first score that's inside of this score right here is our player so i'm going to go ahead and say score for the index path of zero. So that's just gonna grab that first number right out of there. And I'm gonna say plus equals one. So I'm gonna be adding one to that score. And then if the player who won was our enemy, I'm gonna go ahead and say my score, open bracket, close bracket, and I'm gonna set this equal to one, will be plus equal to one. So yeah, there you have it. We're adding one to the score for each of these players as we're going along the game. 
Now, if you want to see the score, we're going to be working on that later in this video series. But right now, if you want to see the score, you can go ahead and say print, and then I'm just say score. So this will print it down here in your console right down here. So again, just print the score so that you can see it right now as we're testing things. Now, another thing I wanted to do, say in tennis, if you win the match, then you're the one to bat the ball. So what I'm going to do here is with this apply impulse that we do when we start the game, I'm just going to go ahead and take this, go down here to my main. You can see that 2020 is going up here. So this is what I'm going to have in my main. But with my enemy here, I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to negative 20 and negative 20. Now, later on, I want to actually randomize this a little bit more. But right now, I think this is going to work perfectly fine. So let's just go ahead and try it out. But anyway, that should be it for our score. So let's just go ahead, build and run this, and let's see what we have. And when I built and ran this, you can see that I got this fatal error index out of range. So one thing I forgot to do is we forgot to call this start game function. So I'm going to go up here to my did move to view, and I'm going to say start game, like so. And now we can go ahead, build and run this, and we should be good to go. So here we have it. We are playing our game. Let's go ahead and make it add some score. And as you can see, uh, we are applying the impulse, so obviously our add score is being called, and you can see that the score is being added down here properly, so that's great. But of course the impulse is just being applied infinitely, so let's go ahead and change that. So the way we do this is we go over here to our add score, and I'm going to say my ball dot position will be equal to cg point open parentheses and this will be an x value of zero and a y value of zero this is the exact center of the screen and then now we also want to go ahead and take away the impulses that it already has so we're just going to say ball dot physics body dot velocity and of course this is a cg vector as you can see so i'm going to set this equal to a cg vector open parentheses, dx value of zero and a dy value of zero. We're just removing all the impulses, all the forces that are going on with our ball. And yeah, there we have it. So now we're putting it right back in the center of the screen and then we're removing all the impulses and then we'll apply those as soon as we have the player who won and whatnot. So let's go ahead and test this out. So here we have it. I'm just gonna go ahead and lose and voila. So now the other person bats the ball. I bat the ball if I win and he bats the ball if he wins. And you can also see that the score is being added like so. Anyway, there you have it. That is how you add scoring to Pong. In the next part of this, we're gonna be working on some of the user interface. So we're gonna be learning how to pause the game as well as add some labels on there and also a start button. And then whether we do it in the next video or not, we're gonna be working on different skill levels. So the person can choose easy or hard. And also later on, we're gonna be working on how to add two person gameplay to this game. So get pumped for that. Glad to see that you guys are enjoying the daily videos in this Pong series. If you are, be sure to hit that like button down below. And also if you wanna see more videos like this from me in the future, including Pong and many other topics, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, have yourselves a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. I wanted to ask you a question for a second. Okay, yeah? I'm looking for my mama, because I'm looking for that photo that pretended to be an ice cream. Okay.